Hey everybody, Nathan Brown here with FCP Euro, and today I'm here to talk a little bit about how to keep your air-cooled Porsche 911 cool under pressure. Now, you may think just from the name air-cooled that air is doing the majority of the cooling on a classic Porsche 911 like the 3.2 Carrera right behind us, but in fact, it's a combination of air and oil. Primarily, you would actually say that the engine is oil-cooled and it's keeping that oil at a good temperature uh, that keeps everything kind of happy, moving along and keeps you making power and safe whether you're in traffic, on the mountain roads or on track. So to start, you think air-cooled. We do have obviously some really, really important components on this engine that are crucial to keeping the engine cool while you're driving. First and foremost, you have your engine cooling fan right here. You have your shroud and all of this is basically sucking cool air in, pushing it down across the cylinder heads, out of the bottom of the car and keeping everything cool. Now, there's a couple of important things to note on these particular units. This is actually bolted to your alternator uh, and sits inside of this shroud right here. It is very, very common to see cracking and damage on these over time. Uh, so if you are servicing your alternator or just doing some periodic inspections, you wanna make sure you inspect the cooling fan itself to make sure you don't have any significant cracking or issues. And if you do find anything, you're gonna to wanna to replace that ASAP. Same thing goes for this shroud here. Uh, neither one of these is necessarily going to be the least expensive component on the car, but they're obviously very, very crucial to making sure you're getting good, clean airflow in, uh, into that engine bay and across those cylinder heads. Uh, so speaking of which, once you have the air that comes in through this fan and through this shroud, uh, it is going through the additional ducting or the engine cover shroud and getting pushed down over the cylinders. Now, the whole fundamental way that an air-cooled engine works, or at least it works in the Porsche 911, is you essentially have a hot side on the bottom and a cold side up top. So you wanna make sure that those two sides are not intermingling, right? So you wanna make sure that this cooling fan, all of this airflow that you're getting through here is going in, it's gonna be nice and cool, and it's separated from the exhaust side or the hot side underneath of the car. So there's a couple of these really basic, simple gaskets, rubber gaskets that will go around the engine bay of any classic air-cooled 911, and they're gonna seal tight to the engine tins, and the engine tins are basically the thing that surrounds the engine to allow these seals to work. So of course, there are a couple of ancillary components. You have a simple belt. This is the thing that is driving that fan, keeping it engaged, making sure that you're getting that airflow. Uh, generally speaking, it's a good idea to keep a spare one in the car, plus whatever tools are necessary to replace it on the side of the road. Uh, and there are other various bits and pieces that are related to the cooling fan operation, uh, such as a clutch and everything else, so that it will sort of engage and disengage as necessary while you're in traffic or while you're driving to, again, help try to keep the engine cool. So we've talked about air, now let's talk about oil. Now, it is worth noting that any classic air-cooled 911 usually has a pretty substantial amount of oil that will go into the oil tank uh, for the purpose of lubricating and cooling the oil. Um, and usually it's gonna be somewhere in the range of around 10 liters, sometimes a little more, uh, depending on exactly what configuration you have, how many oil coolers you have, and whether or not they're factory oil coolers or aftermarket with additional capacity. So. First and foremost, every air-cooled 911 is gonna have one of these on-engine oil coolers that basically mounts to the engine as part of the primary component. And air, of course, is ducted through uh, to help keep the oil cool. There is an engine oil thermostat, which is shown right here. And this is essentially just like a cooling thermostat on a water-cooled car that's opening and closing once the oil reaches the appropriate temperature. And then it's put through this cooler right here. You can get it in a complete replacement version or you can get it in just an insert. Um, and for the older cars, something that's older than this 3.2 Carrera behind us, this is generally gonna be all that's on the car. So one of the more popular upgrades or improvements is to add on the additional uh, oil cooler that sits at the front of the car, which will help improve the cooling capacity of the system significantly. Now this particular setup is basically the OEM style oil cooler or additional oil cooler that sits behind the fender liner on the passenger side of the 3.2 Carrera behind us. Uh, these particular units are aftermarket units from CSF uh, and are designed to either improve the cooling capacity of the factory oil cooler here or duplicate the cooling capacity of the factory oil cooler here. Um, there's also a number of lines that are connecting all of this stuff from the engine all the way up to the front of the car and back. So you always wanna make sure to inspect those, make sure they're free from leaks or any damage or anything like that which is certainly possible depending on how you're driving the car, 
who's been working on the car and if they've accidentally jacked the car up on the oil lines or something like that. This CSF cooler right here is one that you're gonna to wanna to have the engine out to replace this. So if you have the engine out for some other reason, it's not a bad idea to maybe swap this on for some additional cooling capacity without having to go through the extra labor of taking the engine out sometime in the future. Uh, lastly, you see this really, really big RSR style oil cooler here, also from CSF. And CSF makes a number of direct fit oil cooler kits that are designed to fit some of the more popular aftermarket front bumpers for these 911s. So there's an IROC style, there's an RSR style. Each one of these is a different size and it's designed to fit that style of bumper exactly. So obviously you've got this, which is gonna be front mounted on the car. So direct airflow gets definitely more airflow than this side mounted unit, but it's a nice aggressive look um, for a lot of these cars. So a lot of, if you see an older air-cooled 911, uh, that's super racy or out on the racetrack, more often than not, it's gonna have some kind of like an RSR style cooler like that. Um, and then finally, if you do have all those additional oil coolers, you have one additional thermostat. So essentially you have your engine oil cooler thermostat, and then you have your front mounted oil cooler thermostat. So you basically have a series of doors that will open up depending upon oil temperature. Um, so where it'll turn the fan on, it'll open up the primary engine oil cooler uh, thermostat, then it'll open up the auxiliary oil cooler thermostat and basically start to circulate that oil across all those different coolers to make sure that things are staying where they need to be while you're driving the car. So one last little piece, it's not gonna be on all 911s by a long shot, but there are some models that have an auxiliary oil cooling fan that is electric, which again is just yet another layer to try to get airflow across these coolers to keep the oil in check uh, and to keep the engine happy. So with that, I'm gonna go over to this engine here. We're gonna talk about a couple of the individual things I've just mentioned and try to show you where they actually sit on the engine itself. Okay, so here we have the classic air-cooled Porsche 911 engine. They all look more or less the same from the 60s all the way up into the 80s or 90s, but the primary difference is gonna be how much additional stuff they have going on for the fuel injection, but the actual cooling system itself, the airflow and everything is pretty similar. So there are some variations for certain makes and models when it comes to some of the components, but a lot of the basics are all gonna be the same. Um, so as I mentioned, one of the first uh, most important parts are these things right here, which are called the engine tins. So this essentially will seal, There's the rubber gaskets that go into the engine bay of the car will seal tight to this and make sure that all the cool air up here stays cool and all the hot exhaust air stays underneath. As you can see, if you have a bad gasket or you don't have a good seal here, you're literally going to be pulling hot air directly from the exhaust system back in across the engine, which is a no-go when it comes to good performance and keeping the engine happy. Okay, so airflow comes in through the engine bay, goes through this fan and ducted through this shroud. As I mentioned, the alternator is behind this fan here and all driven off the same assembly. Now there is a clutch that basically will allow that, flan that fan to sort of engage and disengage. Um, driven off just a singular belt, so again, it's always a good idea to have one of those uh, handy in case you do need to replace it on the side of the road. Once the airflow gets, th gets sucked in through this fan, put through the shroud, it goes to the engine cover shroud, which is made of plastic. Uh, a lot of these bits and pieces are not necessarily available directly from Porsche anymore. Sometimes you can get reproduction pieces or you may have to find them used. Uh, some of these we will have on fspira.com and we're trying to add more all the time. Um, but if you're noticing that your shroud or your engine tins are damaged, you may have to do a little bit of searching to find exactly the right thing for your car because there are some variations uh, from year to year, engine to engine, make to model, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so at the front of the motor, we're bringing our air in, and we have a little bit more of the cooling stuff going on here at the back end. So the air comes through and is pushed down across the cylinder heads. They're all covered up now, but it basically looks like a, a motorcycle cylinder head where you have a bunch of different individual fins on it, and that's helping to cool those cylinders and keep everything like on the engine itself cool. Now, the other duct here comes back right here to this oil cooler. So this is the oil cooler that I was mentioning that's sort of integrated into the engine on pretty much every classic 911 and 930 turbo. So as you can see, the air comes through here, is ducted through this cooler and out of the bottom, just like every other, just like the rest of the airflow across the engine. So again, cool air, uh, cold, cold side cold, hot side hot. Uh, this particular unit right here, the engine oil cooler thermostat, is one of the three key items known as the triangle of death, where you're generally gonna get uh, a lot of oil leaks on these cars, what may appear as though you have something leaking on the bottom half, but in fact, it's coming from up top. So again, 
Uh, it's mounted right back here, and this is essentially opening and closing and controlling the oil flow that's coming through the engine and whether or not it's going to this oil cooler. If your 911 has an auxiliary oil cooler, that's where it's going to be mounted here. At least the hoses are going to be mounted here. And so then this oil is going to be sent through those long lines up to the front of the car. And again, where you have additional clean, cool airflow before it's sent back through, ingested back in the engine and hopefully keeping everything happy. So. Uh, it does seem like quite a lot's going on when it comes to some of these air-cooled 911s. There's a lot of options, uh, but at the end of the day, it really comes down to making sure you have good oil control uh, and cooling, and you have good airflow across both those coolers and the actual engine itself. So if you have everything and it's in good shape uh, and everything's kind of working the way it's supposed to do and it's been serviced properly, whether it's 95 degrees outside or 65 degrees outside, uh, your 911 should do just fine and it should do a good job of keeping the car cool and uh, keeping yourself on the road. So I know that's kind of a lot to go over. There's a lot more to these, obviously, than what we've kind of touched on this video. So if you have any questions, uh, please feel free, drop them in the comments below. Or if you just enjoyed this video and you want to see more just like it, let us know, uh, hit a like, subscribe to the channel. And uh, with that, we'll see you soon with more content on these air-cooled 911s.